the information there. Okay, so this is the uh, bit that we're going to be dealing with next is section three, uh, just some customization, and then we'll move on to um, actually start building some packages. But this, all this configuration is more about convenience and uh, making the uh, command line a nicer experience. Okay, so this talks about creating a boot device. Um, I'm not going to do this. It's up to you if you want to do it. If you need a boot device, I would do what I always do: is just use whatever, you know, another another Linux uh, distribution that you can boot from if you need that. Um, most of them have some sort of live option these days. Um, it used to be only Nopix that, that I think they pioneered it, but yeah, now now all the big names seem to have it. So I'm not worry about that. Console fonts, as you've seen, I've already modified the console fonts, but I've done it in the kernel. I think this mentions about modifying the, uh, yeah, it's the kernel boot line. So, yeah, if you want different fonts that are in the kernel, you might want to look at this and do it this way. It shows you how to modify the font. And you can use this command, show console font, to show what glyphs are available you can see I've got a box standard well for English speaking anyway it's a box standard um, character set uh, with a few of the European uh, monetary symbols for example there's the pound sign there there's a cent there uh, I think that's peseta uh, I don't know what that is although that's probably out of date now being the euros commonly used across Europe um, but the rest of it, there's all these IBM graphics. It's all a uh, standard IBM character set as far as I can see. And a standard uh, ASCII character set as well on the lower uh, part of the character set. So, yeah, it even mentions this terminus font, which is one that I've enabled in the um, in the kernel. Um, so it looks like way, ways of setting that for XOR maybe but um, we'll, we're installing fonts anyway when we get onto the graphical side of things but for now this font's good enough it's nice and big it's easy for me to read it's hopefully easy for you to read big enough for you to read it's certainly the biggest one that's there at the moment so I can't do much else about that if it's not big enough um, yes, yeah, so about firmware now. Okay, I understand that you may have had problems getting network adapter working. It may need firmware, and you might not even be able to follow uh, as far as you can now because you've not had a network. Um, so the way to get to the point you are now is to copy the packages we've installed onto a USB or a CD and and mount, mount that and then just copy them onto the hard disk that's the way to do it and also if you do find you do need some firmware to copy that onto the USB di uh, disk or the CD or DVD disk um, and what I'm going to go through is how to enable that firmware and get the kernel to load it uh, so that your bit of hardware works when the kernel boots I don't really need to do this but I'm doing it really just to show you how to enable the network car because I think I have had some questions about people's network adapters not working and network adapters can be a bit finicky um, it's a lot about getting the configuration right but more importantly it's about getting the hardware working in the first place because no amount of configuration will, will enable the hardware to work so what I'm going to do is just go through showing you how A to identify if you need firmware and B how to install it so the first thing is to identify if you need firmware is to do dmessage. If you do dmessage, it shows the kernel messages, particularly the ones that boot up. And you can see this time here is the time since the first uh, boot of the kernel. If I put this through less, we'll lose the colors, unfortunately. But you'll be able to see that's the first, the first microsecond, if you like, of the kernel boot. It's issued all these messages. 
So as you go through, you can see this is everything that it's doing when it's booting up. And normally you can't see this because I, I, either it's hidden or it whizzes past so quickly it's just impossible to read. It just goes fast. You know, you can see here, this is in the first uh, two hundredths of a second. These messages have appeared. That's how quick it's done all this work already. And even by the first tenth of a second, it's still looking at the hardware. Um, that's the first fifth of a second. And you can see there's lots. So within what the first second or so, it's still looking at hardware. And it's taken to about probably about here. Yeah, pro uh, uh, here actually, I think this is where the kernel has finished and it's handed over to the user space. And these are messages that have occurred from the networking that's been enabled, the network script, the uh, boot script that enables the network. That's where these messages come along. So you can see that the machine's booted in three and a half seconds, more or less. Um, and then there's another kernel message that's happened 30 seconds after we've booted. So that's all dmessage does. It just displays kernel messages. If you are getting some weird and wonderful messages, it's sometimes useful to look at the kernel messages, dmessage, to see if there's any new messages that have appeared there. Because sometimes it can indicate problems with hardware or some other interaction that's not not working correctly you can also see here if i just get rid of the uh, browser we've got in red unable to loan fir firmware for rtl nick rtl 8168 so this is the type of thing that indicates that this bit of hardware needs some firmware installed you can see it's tried to load it there direct firmware load for rtl nick rtl 816h-2 firmware failed with error 2 um, now these messages, obviously, if I do the the message with less, you can see how there's lots of pages, pages upon pages of the D message. Um, it's going to take a long time to look through. So what we can do is we can pipe D message through grep and look for the word firmware to find out what firmware needs to be loaded. And you can see there's several. Oh, it looks like I've got three, possibly. Definitely two bits of hardware that need firmware loading. And this is the one I'm interested in that I know that I want to load. Is this 915. There's some firmware for the graphics adapter, the Intel i915 graphics chip, which is loaded, which is located inside the actual processor. Uh, and this is the one we just saw, the R. 8169 driver is needed, uh, firmware is needed for that driver. I think that's something to do with the wireless. I'm not using wireless. I'm using a direct connection. So more often than not, it's wireless that needs uh, firmware. But there are other things, as you can see with this um, VGA driver, needs some firmware. The important thing to look for is this bit here. Let me highlight this with the actual console mouse. What this shows here is the uh, like a subdirectory, a section called i915, and then the actual name of the firmware. So these two bits of information are the bits of information that's important that we need to look for. Likewise, this bit here is in a subdirectory called RTL underscore NIC, and the actual firmware file name is this part here. So armed with that bit of information, what we do now is we go to this link here, which is in the kernel uh, website, the kernel.org website. Uh, they do, the Linux and Scratch people do actually provide a mirror for these firmware files here. So you can go to either. I've not ever been to the mirrored one. Um, let me just have a quick look at it, see what it does look like. Okay, yeah, it does look different because it's actually just a directory tree. What I'll do is I'll go through the kernel because it's a little bit confusing if you go this way so I can explain a bit more how it works. So if you remember I said this i915 is important that's the subdirectory that appears here in blue on the kernel website 
So we need to look for that I915. There it is. So we click into that. Here's all firmware for all different types of I915 silicon. And we need to look for one called KBL underscore DMC underscore the one underscore 04 dot pin. So let's just look down KBL DMC underscore the one underscore 04 dot pin. So that is the firmware we need. Now you think you just click on that to download it. It's not that simple. Uh, you, what you'll do is you'll get, a, I think, a page full of hex come up if you click on that. Yeah, it's the it's the binary of inside that file that's displayed there. We don't want that. Don't download that because it won't work. What you want is this link here, this plain link. So if I click that, you'll see it's trying to download a binary file. And you'll notice that file name is the same file name that appears here. So that, again, is important. Just confirm that when you download it. But obviously, we can't download it through the browser. We've got to download it through our console. So let's go back to the page, the uh, BLFS page. And let's just go through to this um, page that we're on with the firmware. Oh, actually, I could have just, let's go here, look about firmware, select it there. And we can go onto the kernel web page here. I'll just get rid of this Firefox browser for a while. Now, again, because we haven't got any uh, certificates installed, it's ask, asking us if we want to continue because we can't find the certificate. So just do yes. Do yes again. And then we've got the same sort of page up. So what we need to do is just look for, you can use page up and page down to get between pages. So I'm going to just do that to look for the i915 directory. Obviously, your hardware might be different. It will be, especially if it's a uh, wireless or network card you want to do. There's I915 down the bottom. So we want to go onto that I915. You see, we've got it highlighted and press enter. Again, we've got the SSL question, so just do yes. And now you can see we've got these firmware files. And just to double check what I need. I need one that says, there it is there, KBL DMC ver 104. So let me look for that KBL. So it's on the second page. DMC ver 1 underscore 104. So that's the one I want there. But remember from the Firefox, this isn't the link we press enter on. Oops, and that's what I just did. I pressed right, it's not right. Bit intuitive because I want to move right, but it's not, it's down we want to move till we get onto the plane, and that's where I want to press enter now because that's got the download. Um, so, yes, I do want to continue and just press D for download, and you can see it's downloaded it and it's asking us where do you want to put it, save to disk, that's the only option. It says press enter. Now, if I press the, uh, I can change the file name here. I don't want to do that. But what I want to do, I should have been in the sources directory. I can't remember if I was or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in forward slash sources forward slash BLFS forward slash. So that should go into the sources BLFS directory. It's saving it. It hasn't complained. So I'm going to go back now. In fact, I'm going to quit this to make sure I am in the sources directory. I bet I'm not. No, I'm not. So I'm going to do that now. Just so any other downloads we do, do end up in the right place. Let's just check that it has copied it there. And yes, there it is there. So that's okay. Oh, I've just noticed I've left the links in there. I keep forgetting because I can't see what directory I'm in without doing a PWD print working directory. So I'll just delete that now while I'm here. And then I'll go back into the Linux from scratch. In fact, I think I can go directly to the BLFS page by typing that in. Yep. And I want to read online. And I want the latest version, and I want to go to 
the firmware page again where I was before. Okay, so if I now go back to the um, Firefox browser, just so I can read this easier, it tells us what to do with this file. Uh, right, okay, so this bit here is it? No, it says a bit about microcode. It does tell us what to do here. If it doesn't, then I'll just go through. Um, microcode, yeah, again, if you're using like live or you're going to be using this as a live system, you probably want to have a go at this if you've got a recent, fairly recent processor. It's um, worth loading microcode to fix any bugs that are on the chip. Um, I'm not sure if there are any fixes for the uh, Spectre and Meltdown yet, but there might be some uh, microcode that uh, alleviates those those problems. Um and you probably want to do early loading if you can. It's it's a better way of loading the microcode. Uh, the kernel loads it very early on in the boot so that it's there ready and waiting. So you probably want to do that one if you can. So you've got firmware now. Firmware for video cards. This is what I want to do. So um, what we need to do here is as you can see, we need to make a directory uh, in the lib firmware directory. So if I go back to my console, uh, I'm in the root. So if I'm going to go to the lib firmware, and if we look in there, there's nothing there at the moment. It's not, not even any hidden files. What we need to do is make a directory, and the directory we need to make is this name here. So because this is a graphics card I'm downloading, the firmware for the graphics card, this is the directory for that particular firmware, i915. If I was to do my wireless, this RTL NIC is the directory that I'd create. But I'm not doing that, I'm doing the i915. So you have to do whatever firmware you need to load the directory name for it. So if we just get the browser up, we can see the command, I'll just type it in by hand, it'd be easier. Make the minus PV forward slash lib forward slash firmware and then the name of that directory which I've highlighted with the GPM mouse so I can just right click and press enter and it's created that directory. Now I need to copy the firmware into that directory and that's what the second command is about, the CP command. So CP minus V, where our blob is, the binary image, well, we've put it in sources, BLFS, and it's called KBL something, just press tab. And you can see we copy it into that directory we just created. So it's forward slash lib, forward slash firmware, and the name of the directory that the firmware expects to be in, I915 in my case, in your case it'd be different. Then it says there are actually two ways of installing this firmware. BLFS and the kernel configuration for additional firmware section gives an example of compiling the firmware into the kernel. Slightly faster load, but using more kernel memory. Um, and here we use an alternative method by making the radian driver a module. Well, what I shall be doing is, I believe is the same as this method here, is compiling it into the kernel. Let me just have a quick look at it. Yes, it is. Yeah, this is why I'm going to do it. I thought it actually said how to do it down here. Let's look. No, it doesn't. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I should do is I'll just use this as a reminder of what needs to be done. But I won't specifically be reading from this. So we need to go to the kernel. and We need to tell the kernel where this location, the location of this firmware is, and also what the kernel, the firmware file name is as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, ready to paste into the kernel when we modify it, just so I don't have to type anything in. In fact, I'm going to copy, yeah, I'll copy all that. One thing we need to know is where the firmware is held. So on this system, all the firmware is held in lib firmware. That's pretty standard. 
and I believe the kernel already has this location set in it because it's the standard. So let's go into our kernel sources, which if you remember is under sources Linux. Type make menu config to start the configuration up. And we have to go to, let's see, does it say where it is? This is a bit I can never remember. Uh, let me go here, I think it's down the bottom. Oh, firmware drivers, there it is, it's near the top. So that's where we started, it's just down here, about eight, eight, seven or eight lines down, firmware drivers. Uh, or is it Google Forge? No, it's not. It's not that bit. Sorry. It's device drivers. Is it this one here? No, right. I can't remember where it is. So what I'm going to do is the way to do it. If you can't remember where something is, is they've given us the actual config. Um, keyword if you like and we can search for this you can either search with the config underscore or just the bit after the config underscore it doesn't matter which because all the settings in the kernel start with config underscore so we need to search for extra firmware or or even extra firmware underscore does so let's look for that and to do that you do forward slash type in extra firmware let's put dir in it doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase and there it is there you see the symbol name that they, they call it extra firmware dir so it's actually under device drivers generic driver options firmware loader and then firmware loader utility and it's already set on as well so device driver generic driver options so device drivers generic driver options firmware loader there it is um, this one so you can do help yes extra firmware there it is so that's the if I go back to the browser you can see that's one of the options and this is the bit where we put in the directory and the name of the firmware so We'll edit that, select, we'll paste in by right clicking our firmware and press enter. And you can see once we've put that in, it's populated or created a new option. And that's got the uh, directory where the firmware lives. And you can see that that is the place that we put this in. You don't need to put the forward slash in there because it would assume it's off the root directory then. So you can see we've got forward slash lib forward slash firmware and the firmware with its directory that it's in in the uh, firmware named blob if you need to put in multiple firmware that's allowed you just separate them by space and you just put in you know the next one so like rtl underscore whatever forward slash whatever that's how you put in multiple firmware if you have more than one so that's all we need to do with that, just save that and we recompile it, recompile the kernel. And what it will do, it will take that firmware blob and it will put it into the kernel, so the kernel will grow in size a little bit. And you can see up here it's created the software, if I just go back you can see it's um, taken that that uh, binary and embedded it into the into the kernel. So let's copy our um, kernel image again. In fact, if I do ls minus l on the one we've just built and look at the one that was we had previously you can see the new one 
Oh, it's actually going to... Uh, Another image. Sorry, that should be. Oh, what have I done here? Good. Oh, right, yes, of course. The dot dot is that much. And then x86 forward slash boot bz image. So there's the new one, and you can see it's grown a little bit. I think the file was about 8,000 bytes, was it? And it looks like it's grown about 5,000 because this is actually a compressed image, so it's compressed it down a little bit as well. So you can see that's why that's grown. So let's copy the Oh, what done that? Oh, I don't know what's happened there. Let's clear that. Right, Control R, C P Arch. Right, there's the copy command to copy into the boot directory, and then C P uh, Control R, C P System system.map and control rcp dot config and that's the config file and once again I do make uh, modules install let's make sure there's no changes to the modules and what I should do now is go back to my second terminal I'll quit this log out go back to the first terminal and I'll log out of here and reboot the machine and just double check that that firmware has been loaded and we'll do that by inspecting the D message symbol again uh, D message output again okay so there's the grub menu let's press enter it's booting and we're back at the prompt so let's log in let's do the message grep firmware and you can see we've now got no error for the i915 it says finish loading DMC firmware so that's fine so it's just these two other ones there's this I don't know if this uh, this one here is to do with the uh, wireless or not it happens quite a lot earlier than the actual loading or the attempted load of the wireless uh, firmware itself so I'm not sure what that one is but everything else seems to work so I'm not too worried about that obviously if I was worried about this machine being a proper live use machine one that I'll be using day to day then I'd be looking into that to find out what that message means um, searching on the internet to find out why that appears but as far as I'm concerned, the one that I wanted to load to, I think effectively it improves performance of the video, uh, which might be a, a critical thing if we're doing lots of compiling. Uh, all the messages that we fly across the screen on some packages, it could could uh, have a diff make a difference in some of the bigger packages as to how long they take to build. So that's how we install the firmware. So what I'm going to do now is just get this back to where we were on the um, Linux from scratch book uh, if I spell it right okay let's try links yeah there it is And you notice know, the cookies are working now because it's not asking about any certificates or anything. Uh, so we want to go to read online. And we want to read the book. 
and we want to get back down to firmware where we were before okay and I'll bring back the Firefox browser so you can see that this is basically what this is explaining here how to set it so if you have got a Radeon card and you want to activate it then you'd need to load firmware in much the same way as we've just been done and you can see there's the live firmware symbol that needs to be set and there's more information if you've got an NVIDIA chip network inf interfaces it shows here yeah RTL NIC uh, similar to one that I've got not working and any other devices so you may need to go through that yourself uh, about devices we've got multiple sound cards multiple CDs uh, USB device issues then you'll need to read this you might need to make some modifications to alter how uh, they're loaded whether they're loaded in consistent or, or predictable manner